Well, I want to thank everybody who's um, participating today. Um, and I, I honestly want to thank Stephen Lindell. Um, they have been just so instrumental in taking um, a desire of mine, kind of a passion of mine, and turning it into um, true art um, and something that um, was far beyond anything that, that I could have imagined. So let me kind of give a couple minutes of, of how this came to be. And then Stephen Lendl, the brains behind the operation, will talk to you about how it can be again. Um, a couple of years ago, I had the pleasure of going through the Leading Age uh, Leadership Academy at the national level. And uh, the very first event that we went to, and it's a year long experience, we, get to get, we got together uh, four times throughout the year. And it, it's professionals throughout our industry, across the country. And kind of on our very first day, we were asked a question. And that question was, if you could change one thing about or within the field of aging services or providing services to um, the aging population, what would it be? And, and almost instantaneously from asking that question, they say, and don't answer it now. <laughs> so um, we spent each time we got together and then we also had a monthly call in smaller teams. Uh, we were asked, so about that question, what time have you spent thinking about it? And what do you see um, kind of your role in, in bringing about the change that you're, you're thinking about? So over the course of the year, we each of us went from this, this small nugget of an idea. And, and the other encouragement they told us was, don't solve a problem. You know, don't, if your passion is Medicaid eligibility for people in a skilled nursing facility, okay. But I'm not asking you to solve it within, um, within the industry because you're not necessarily in a position to solve it. Just think about, and the whole idea is to get each person thinking about creative solutions to um, either a problem or a vision, think, thinking bigger uh, around a topic. So I can tell you at the time that I went through um, the program, um, I was in the midst of um, ultimately losing my father to lung cancer. And the minute they asked that question, I knew exactly what I wanted to do in concept. I didn't have any clue how to do it and I had no clue um, that I would ultimately get paired with these people who, who would um, just kind of blow my vision up. So um, at the end of that year long experience, each of the 50 or so people who went through the program had to do or got to do a two minute presentation. And within that two minute presentation, you had to um, every 15 or so seconds the slide would change. So you kind of had to tell your whole story in two minutes. And my whole story, um, and I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to tell you kind of the, the idea was I, I have learned in my career far too much about people by attending their memorial services. And that is a shame. Um, to know that people were um, incredible husbands and wives and mothers and fathers and grandparents and captains of industry and teachers and just the whole gamut um, to learn that um, at their funeral really to me um, told me that I didn't do my job in getting to know people. Um, and, and it really left a sadness in me that all of these things that could have been really important to know about someone and we could have highlighted while they were living, I was learning when it was too late. Um, so I called, my, my, my presentation was called Honor in the Now. Um, and think about going to a memorial service. What 
I learned something about an Aldersgate resident that he was a World War II fighter pilot and was essentially lost in action. Um, and his wife didn't hear from him for months and months and months and months. And, and everyone assumed that he was lost in battle somewhere. And he knocked on his own front door and his wife opened the door and nearly fainted um, because here was her presumably um, dead husband. Uh, so kind of my, my presentation was we need to pay honor to people in the now while we can. And it goes beyond um, getting hot food hot and cold food cold while that is important. And it's something that we we haven't always done great here at Aldersgate, um, but it also goes to knowing who people are and, and working on um, pulling out of, of you all things that have been important in your life, things that um, were transformational. Um, and that was the idea. And, and here, here's what I learned in doing that presentation. It was two minutes long. And for me, it was a piece of cake. Um, I had slides that I wanted to talk about and I got up there and just banged it out. And for others um, kind of in that experience with me, it was the most nerve wracking, um, soul searching, gut wrenching experience they ever went through publicly because they didn't have a, a um, they didn't have a cohesive vision. Um, so, project out a year from uh, when I finished that program and, and it was having a conversation with Lyndall about her desire to continue working and doing more with Aldersgate. And we talked for a little bit and she kind of put up her finger and said, you know what, we need to involve Steve in this conversation. Uh, and we did. And um, again, for me, it is the most um career rewarding experience I've ever been a part of um, probably will be the most rewarding um, part of my career um, moving forward. And it's something that I, I hope that at Aldersgate becomes kind of ingrained in our community because of the value that it brings to um, each individual who goes through this journey. So, um, with that, I want to, again, anybody who's joining us for this and, and will join us, um, I know it's a lot of work. I know that Steve and Lyndall will challenge you. They will poke and prod um, interpersonally the way a surgeon kind of does, um, and, and you will be better for it. You will... Um, you will have something that uh, will prove to be of benefit, hopefully to you and to your families um, and to all who hear. Um, and hopefully it will be something that kind of lets you know that in this world we live in, um, you are honored and you are revered for who you are. So with that, I want to turn it over to Stephen and Lindell and um, let them talk about how they want to surgically um, get inside your head and heart. <laughs> well, um, so Steve, you want me to go first? Sure. Um, so hello, everybody. I can't see everybody on my screen, but um, hello, everyone. And uh, it's wonderful to be back at Aldersgate, even in this form, uh, just to see familiar faces and um, some unfamiliar faces, which is also very exciting. So just to introduce myself very briefly, I'm a gerontologist and I have a social work background and a PhD in gerontology. And um, my interest in becoming a gerontologist was that my father owned a nursing home in Cape Town, South Africa, one of his businesses that he had called Harewood Nursing Home. And um, I would love to go with him when he went to see, actually his parents ended up uh, living there, but when he, went, when he just went to see what was going on and how my aunt was managing it, she was a nursing sister and she managed the place. And um, <clears throat> I just absolutely loved hearing the stories 
of the elders who were living there. They would tell me these fascinating, absolutely magnificent stories about the history of South Africa, about their lives, about where they'd been, when they were my age as a little girl and all of that. And so um, when, when um, Jeff and I were able to have a conversation, as he, as he pointed out, about what we could be doing at Aldersgate to somehow really highlight what each person brings to the, what each person at Aldersgate has brought in their own lives um, to make a difference to the world, um, we, um, we came up with this idea of involving Steve, who is a theatre director and a dear friend of mine from many years ago, and we've known each other a long time. And so um, that's how we're on the screen today. Um, and um, thanks to Jeff for being willing to just take what I said and run with it and, um, and include, include Steve, um, who will be introducing himself now. So um, lovely to be back with everybody. I have so missed being at Aldersgate. I cannot tell you, it's just been really, really tough not being able to be with everybody. And um, as we all know, so uh, it's, it's affected me as well. Um, so I'm really pleased to see all of you on the screen and look forward to being back on campus, having now had our vaccines and uh, see where we go with this round. Um, so thanks, Jeff, for inviting us back. Steve. This, this is the longest exploration of a project, I think, that I've ever <laughs> been involved in. And I, I have to say, I'm Steve Umberger and I'm a theater director and producer and sometimes video uh, producer and director. I've worked on 250, I say 250, it's actually more than that. After 250, you don't have to count or say it, um, projects. But as I've told Jeff, and Lyndall certainly knows this, this has been hands down, possibly the most interesting project uh, and, and most unusual that I've ever worked on. And I've also said it is, you know, the word collaboration is used, thrown around a lot, but this is the truest example of real collaboration that I think I've ever been involved in. Um, three very different people from very different backgrounds and different walks of life Jeff and Lyndall and myself with very different skill sets have somehow managed to find ourselves together in the same corner of the universe. Um, it's very, very unusual. And we all sort of feel like pioneers in a way. I remember Lyndall at the beginning of Acting Our Age One back in 2017, when we first started down this road, Lyndall said, have you ever done this before? And I said, well, I've done parts of this before at various times, but you know, really you get to a point in your life and your career where you really hunger for something uh, new and something different. So Jeff's impulse um, to honor people's stories and their lives has been the propulsion for this. And it remains the engine um, for all the different iterations of Acting Our Age. Um, I'm, I'm going to show, we have a five minute PR video, a little promo that we put together after the first Acting Our Age, um, which was performed in 2019 live on stage at Spirit Square after a year and a half of development with the eight participants, uh, seven participants around the table, meeting every week, which every group does. And that first group then resulted in a script that we, Lyndall and I crafted from their life stories that they shared with us and it became a stage production. Each Acting Our Age, and we'll talk a little bit about certainly Sherry and Dick 
know this, the second uh, edition, the, the pandemic edition, we call it, of Acting Our Age, had a very different journey. Um, each one is very specific to the times and the, the people who are involved. But right now to give, I'm not sure that Dick and Sherry have actually seen this promo. And I think the new, the new people that I'm seeing here, I don't know whether you've seen it or not, but it will give you a pretty good um, flavor of what the original project and the original impulse um, was and, and what, it, what it produced. So let me share my screen. I'm gonna share it and pull this up. Can everybody see a blank screen now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I want, a blank screen. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this works. We make these assumptions about elders in retirement communities and we forget that they have these rich life stories. But we were convinced that we had material, that we had a story, if we could find it, if we could reveal it. When we got to the point where you all approached and said, I think we have something that we could turn into a theater piece, it blew my mind. Well, I didn't expect that it was going to end up being a play. <laughs> it's been a, a really fascinating experience to go back over your life. It's been great. It's given me confidence that at 95, you can still be productive. You don't have to stop living just because you get old. We are recognizing people for who they are, who each person is, instead of who they, the group, is. It was a, a phone call that I got from Jeff. He spoke about this passion that he has for hearing the stories of elders and wanting to somehow figure out a way to capture them. I said, my friend Steve Umberger, who is a theater director, I think he would be really interested in collaborating. Real stories have a course of authenticity and a power that I thought would be really interesting to try to do on stage. We started off with probably 35, I think, initially, and we didn't wean people out. They weaned themselves out, and that's how the idea was birthed. It came from Jeff, and then we talked about it, and then it ended up on the stage. I never expected to live this long. I thought being in your 90s meant, you know, you're gone. But somehow, I just keep waking up every morning. <laughs> we worked on this for 15 months. We first had to get the experiences of the people and their lives, their history, their times, in order to tell their individual stories. And then as we did that, we found that their stories were telling the entire history of the country. I was one of the Rose of the Riveters. Many a day I'd fill my mouth full of rivets. I'd do one, it booked the rivet, and I'd do another. I was just spitting rivets. <laughs> when my brother Bill was ready to be assigned somewhere, it scared the living daylights out of me. I have to move from the back of the room to the front line. I'm going to take up your challenge. To go to the march on Washington. And we know what happened in World War II. We know what happened throughout the decades. And sometimes we separate the people from the events. But all of our lives are made up of these events. And, and we all have these commonalities. We all have these experiences that make up what has happened through our history. So it was a really interesting process of looking through a microscope in a way at their lives, but also looking at it through binoculars. As we built up the trust and we took them deeper and deeper, they were reluctantly initially willing to go to those places and then really were able to celebrate, oh my gosh, we got there. When I was 70 years old, I found out that I was adopted. I also discovered that I am not a spy. 
I am an heroine. I thought a long while about how I could best advise you, my younger self. I had to live my life as I can write. I wish I had known at 25 what I know at 86. But you can't dwell on that. You got to just keep going and see what happens. Everybody has a story. So you see people respond and you see them go through a similar process, I think, a similar sort of transformation just by watching. There's celebration in it. There's kind of introspection and a little bit of awakening in it. But there's also some reconciliation throughout this whole process and then strong sense of community building. So plant a little watermelon on my grave and let the juice trickle free. <laughs> So that's uh, a taste of the first Acting Our Age. Um, this project this year will not be a stage project for sort of obvious reasons. We're beginning to be back, but um, for live performance, that's, that's gonna be a, a longer arc. But, we're going to do this year an idea that we have had for a long time, which is a documentary, a film documentary about the process. So rather than a live final performance, this will result in an, an hour long documentary with interviews and footage and shots of memorabilia of the participants about this experience. And the other thing I'll say before I hand it back to Lyndall is this is always created by the specific um, personalities and histories, um, energy, life stories of the participants in any given group. Just like individuals know to alike, that's true of the group itself. And so we don't know exactly where it's going to go until we have the group together because it's truly co-created by everyone involved and the content of what we create depends on what people share um, who they are who the group is and the discovery i think maybe the most important thing and the most interesting, the discovery of, of the identity of the group as a whole made up by those individual uh, minds and hearts. But it's, um, it is truly a co-creation. Um, and I think Dick and Sherry would, would probably support that. They did not have the advantage of completing the project because we were all, as we know, in a very unusual year. But, but they, they did heroically. Last year, we started um, what we thought would be just a normal second edition of Acting Our Age. We met for three weeks and then we all went into lockdown. We all know what happened. But heroically, Dick and Sherry and that group jumped right online and we all began or continued on Zoom. And we had a very, very interesting um, time, very different kind of time, but um, very, very interesting. So I'm gonna um, hand this back to Lyndall to talk a little bit more about the, the content. 
Yeah, so thanks, Steve. Um, this is, as you said, it's a deep dive. And um, so the way to get to, you know, really where we need to go with, um, with being able to document what's been happening in people's lives through this experience of, of living through the pandemic and, and your life in general um, is to use different modalities to get to the stories of, of each person and then to be able to weave them together into a coherent larger story that tells more than just the individual stories. So, you know, if you've seen documentaries about um, narrative and um, and individual stories, like for instance, some of the some of the great things that are on PBS, you'll 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 have a sense of what we're talking about here. Of course, this modality will be very different because it won't be on stage; it will be, you know, on uh, on um, screen. So, what we what we look for is. Um, ways that people can go really deep um, into their stories and maybe to even uncover things that they might not even have realized about their stories. And so to do that, we, do, we use very different modalities. We could be on, you know, on one, one meeting time, we could be doing some writing and meeting time, there would be um, discussion amongst each of you um, who, are, who are interested in being part of this next round. Um, there might be um, um, a, a, a sort of, for want of a better term, assignments that we give you to write about or to speak about or um, to discuss. And within that discussion, there are many aha moments that come out of that, many insights that come out of that. Um, and um, so in a way, it's a, it's a really personal journey to participate in something like this. Um, and to, to really kind of examine, um, sorry, that noise in the background is my my puppy <laughs> trying to get my attention. <laughs> um, and um, so, so, you know, it's for some people, it was really tough to go that deep. But then when they did, this well opens up and that's the gem. I mean, that's the actual like, mwah of, <laughs> you know, what we're looking for um, and what, uh, what can emerge out of this. And we never know. We don't know who's in the room. And so there's, this, there's a sense of mystery, too about it um, uh, and uh, and then of course we were able to you know with this with this round we're going to, we as we've said we're going to be doing the filming of it so um, filming the process uh, and to capture the stories as we're as we're we're um, getting people to tell their stories so uh, I think those are have I missed out on anything writing there'll be you know as I said a lot of writing um, individual interviews we'll be doing and uh so it's intense and it's rewarding and i can honestly say that we have heard so much from family members uh who just were blown away by this um i had i had the fortune of having dot horn um and her son and daughter-in-law over here for lunch one day after the the first round um and he just he just kept saying there are things about you know, my mother, she doesn't stop talking. She tells me everything. But he said, there are still things that I learned in that process of watching that theater production that I had no clue about. So um, he said, you know, and to have my children being there to be able to witness this, it's like a legacy that gets passed on. Um, so. And I yeah. think, that, I'm sorry, where, are you done? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually never, we're never done. Um, the other thing I would say to that is not only what family learns, but what the participants learn. Because we heard over and over again from people that they, doing, doing the retrospective of their lives, they, there are so many things they realized when they got to the end of it that they didn't clearly know when they started the project. I remember George Moffat saying, uh, I, I now can see how far I've come, how much I've changed, how, how, how much life has given me and I've given to it. There have been many, many comments about that. And I just got, by the way, I just got an email from Andy Payette, who was in the original Acting Our Age, and you all probably know that Bob Payette who's no longer with us, was also in it. 
And Andy just said, she said, I'm, I'm wishing you well on this third edition of Acting Our Age. It remains uh, one of Bob's and my defining experiences mm. at Baldur's Gate. So I thought that was nice of her. Um, so uh, we're, we're here at the 30 minute mark. Um, we're certainly all here to hear any comments that anybody has um, so far about this or to ask and answer any questions. Um, Dick and Sherry, it's, it is really good to see you. Um, I, I'd like to just <clears throat> add to what uh, you and Lyndall have said as a, as a participant, um, it was therapeutic to me to be a member of the, of the second group. Um, I won't say it's like therapy because that has a, uh, some implications you <laughs> may not want to have associated with the project, but it is, uh, it is therapeutic to be part of the group and have an opportunity to uh, explore some, <clears throat> some of the things that uh, Steve and Lyndall posed to us. And uh, no, nobody knows where it's gonna go. And it's not just where, where the group is gonna go, but where history is gonna go. Because when we started that second group, nobody knew that there was gonna be a COVID pandemic. And you know we got, if you wanna call it sidetracked, or uh, knocked off course and did our best to recover. And there was some, some good that came out of that, even though we had to change course from what we had planned to do. So I, I, I think there's huge potential. Thanks, thanks for that. We, yeah, thanks. We've been really, really, well, we were really sad to have to stop midstream. Um, for obvious reasons, but also because an experience like we've all just been through and are still going through is so vast, it's so um, profound that you can't wrap your mind around it easily or quickly. And people want to know what's going on. You know, people want to feel safe and they want to feel grounded. And it's, um, it's difficult to feel that right now. These projects, I think, help um, people come together to feel those things. And in the process of doing it, um, there's, um, there are things that we discover about how we have navigated life. And certainly that's true in a normal time. It was true of the first group, group true of the second group up until the pandemic hit. And, and Lyndall and I just think, and I think Jeff thinks this too, you know, we only have more stories now than, than we ever had. And, and you know, we're, the, the project will certainly bring in non-pandemic aspects of life. It, you know, we're not there to simply focus on one topic, but we've heard over and over again, just from people in our lives, how this last year has changed their perspectives on their lives. So we, we think it will be, um, it has to be at least as interesting as all the other acting our ages, if not twice. So, um, are there other questions from those of you who have not been involved before? Um, I will also say this is a information Zoom session, but we are also scheduled to be live and in person um, on Friday at Aldersgate, and again on Monday for what we call recruitment sessions. It sounds like you're going in the army, um, but the, the, these are times that are live times 
when we schedule, you know, when we have groups of eight or 10 people who show up who are interested in, you know, being face to face and, and talking a little more um, intimately. Um, so certainly, if you've been here on this session and you think, think that you might be interested, but you're not sure, then we encourage you to come to one of those three sessions. And that will be, I think we'll be communicating with Bryn and she'll be sending out the specifics of that. But it's, it'll be Friday morning and Monday afternoon, I believe. But you'll, you'll get the details on that. And beyond that, when do you expect to start, uh, hope to start meetings? Uh, Wednesday, a week from Wednesday. Oh, April really? 25th. Yeah. And yes. meet weekly until early um, summer, like we it, started it out? Be, it will be 11, 11 weeks total. Okay. Starting Till June 23rd. Uh, June 30th. I mean, June 30th, sorry. Yeah, to the, to the very end of June. At which point there will be um, some time for us to retreat to the editing studio and put this together. And then this is to be announced, the details of this. We'll have showings of the documentary just as we had live performances. Uh, of the first act in our age. What else would you add to that, Lyndall, or anybody else who's got a question? Gosh, I think you covered it all. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add, <laughs> okay. which is unusual. <laughs> I would add, um, Stephen Lyndall, I would add this thought. Um, there may be those who are watching this and, and you may be thinking, you know, my life just isn't that interesting. Oh. Um, and I know for certain you heard that with the first group. You may have caught it in, in the abbreviated second session. Um, you know, and I don't think that you and, and Lyndall, you and Steve made up the stories that, that occurred um, for anyone. So I would just offer that while the lives that we lead we may think are just, that's just what I did. Um, there is great experience and history and interest to others um, in your life. So, you know, don't, yeah. don't hide from your life um, and, and pursuing this. Well, I, I said, I say, oh, sorry. Can I just jump in, Stephen? Um, Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. You know, there's this um, reticence to, to feel like, oh my gosh, when I look back at my life, what do I have to offer? We, you know, what, 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 me? I mean, I just led a very ordinary life and who would be interested in this? And it is absolutely <laughs> fascinating to me, having been a gerontologist now working with elders for over 30 years. I've heard that so many times and when you sit down with the person and then you start hearing what they think is this ordinary life of, you know, the, the hum and the drum and the, oh gosh, oh well, this is just life, you know, it's nothing special. They're these gems that come out of somebody's mouth and you just want to go, oh my gosh, no, wait a minute, what do you mean? You don't have an interesting life. So, uh, so that, thanks for saying that, um, Steve, because we have heard that quite a few times and then we just, unearth something that is just an absolute gem. Well, and, what, um, yeah, what I want to say is we heard that all the way through the 18 months on Acting Our Age 1 from Betty Callan. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> Betty Callan, who kept saying, you know, she would sort of corner us before or after a session. She would say, look, my life is really not very interesting. And I, I, I just don't have as big a story as everybody else. And we got to the point where we would say, shut up about that. And, uh, <laughs> sit, sit down and do the work. Um, but you know, she, she's very industrious. And of course, anyone who saw the project knows what a full, rich life and spirit Betty Callan 
is and what a really vital member of that seven, mm-hmm. seven, seven member team she was. So that's just my way of echoing all of that. Uh, and, that and then uh, also I have to say that she was, she was bit by the bug when we finally got to performances, got to the end of the process and she really got the response from people hearing her story. It was like a star was born, <laughs> truthfully. She, she, got, she said, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. So hmm. that's just another uh, endorsement. And what it, what it was to all her, her family members and she has this huge family. And so everybody just was so, in her family was so touched by by what, what she experienced and how she so bravely got up there on stage and told it to everybody. So there's that too, thinking about the legacy that we want to leave for our family members and what a wonderful way to do that. Truthfully. So we're, we're interested in uh, everybody and anybody, all stories, truthfully, because everybody has one. I say that in the promo, everybody has a story. And everybody's story is compelling because you've lived a life. And that's not an easy thing. Other questions or comments? Maybe we've covered the covered the waterfront. Everybody's already writing, Steve. <laughs> 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 we didn't give an assignment yet, but they're, <laughs> they're doing it. Whatever they're doing. Good. Okay. Well, as, as we said, we, we will be in person on Friday uh, at Aldersgate and on Monday. And those details will, I, I, I suppose those are being put out on Wells Vesta. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yep. And Stephen Lindell, um, I can't wait until Friday so that we can say welcome home. Oh. Um, get, feels, you, get you feels back in the fold. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Can't wait to give Constance a big hug. Oh, I know. <laughs> We've been vaccinated, by the way. <laughs> That's right. F- fully vaccinated. It does feel revolutionary, sort of, to be in person. Yes. Who, who thought that just walking in the door someplace would feel like right. an act of revolution? Yeah. <laughs> but, but Jeff, thanks again. Thanks for the, the impulse that created all this and thanks for keeping, keeping the ball in the air because yeah. it, it's, it's a visionary um, thing. Well, thank you too for your collaboration and, and for those who are gonna participate for your openness and willingness to, um, to share your life in a different way with us. Um, and just know that um, Stephen and Linda will be very good stewards of your story. Um, and I cannot wait to, uh, to hear it more fully um, because it will, shape, um, it will shape the life of everybody who hears it. Yep. Agreed. All right. Yes. Well, we shall see you all soon. All Thank right. you. Good to be with you all. Thank you. Great. Take care. Bye.